Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Super quick video here today. I'm gonna show you how to set up a Golden Gate assembly. So um, we use the Moclo standard of assembly that was developed uh, in the Duber lab here in our lab as well. And so um, I'll link the paper for a description of how that protocol actually works. But essentially Golden Gate assembly um, is a restriction enzyme based assembly method that utilizes type 2S restriction enzymes that allow us to use um, stereotyped overhangs to assemble parts and um, cassettes together into larger vectors. So what I have here are um, two cassettes that I want to do a multi-cassette assembly with. And we like to label our tubes with different colors to indicate um, what type of plasmid they are. So red here in our lab corresponds to uh, ampicillin or carboxylin resistance. Um, and those vectors are always cassettes. And the green vectors or the green stickers represent canamycin resistant plasmids, which are the multi-cassette or final stage assembly. So these are all of my component plasmids, the parts that are going to go into the backbone. I also have some T4 ligase buffer here, plus PEG uh, 3350. We aliquot this out into uh, like six microliter uh, aliquots, just because repeated freeze thawing of T4 DNA ligase uh, denatures the ATP. So these are single-use aliquots, six microliters each. Now I use a modified smaller volume Golden Gate protocol. So it's a five microliter um, total volume reaction mix. And I'll link the in the description um, what actually goes into this recipe. But essentially it's um, 0.25 microliters of each plasmid, 0.25 microliters of each enzyme, half a microliter of T4 DNA ligase buffer, and then fill to water with the rest. So super easy protocol. I'm gonna grab my enzymes now. So here, since I'm doing a multi-cassette assembly, we will be using um, ESP31, which is an isokismer of BSMB1, as well as T4 DNA ligase. So the order in which I like to do this is first add my water to this tube. I'm gonna get a new tube. That one looks kind of janky. So I'm gonna first add the water to the tube. And so here I have three plasmids. That's 0.75 microliters of volume, um, followed by one microliter of ligase buffer and the enzymes. So uh, that's 1.75 microliters of stuff. So that will be 3.25 microliters of water that I will add to this tube. Now, typically I'll be doing a lot more than just one Golden Gate assembly at a time, in which case uh, it makes a lot more sense for you to prepare a master mix of whatever it is that you're making based on the component plasmids and enzymes. Next, I'll add my ligase buffer. 0.5 microliters of ligase buffer. And I always, um, with these, when I'm pipetting these small volumes, I always visually confirm to make sure that the uh, correct amount of liquid is in the tip. And then I also visually confirm to make sure that that liquid has been expelled from the tip. You'll see that this it becomes more important for really viscous things like enzymes. Next, I'll add my restriction enzyme, ESP31. Again, 
visually confirming that I have 0.25 microliters in there. And I'll even push the second stop there to actually get that liquid out since it is pretty viscous. Followed by my T4 DNA ligase. Okay. And then I'm going to immediately put these enzymes back in the freezer. Because uh, they need to be kept at minus 20 to preserve their activity. Finally, add a quarter of a microliter for each of my plasmids. And here you'll see that I'm offsetting the plasmids, moving them from where they were initially on the block so that I remember what plasmids I've already put in the tube. There we go, the final plasmid. Now I will label that tube with a marker. 64. And then I'm going to flick the tube to mix the contents and then spin that down in the centrifuge. And then I'm going to take this tube over to the thermocycler and today since I am on a time crunch I am going to run the GG short protocol which takes about an hour. If I had more time I would run GG long which takes about three hours to complete but gives you slightly higher efficiency. Although I did a five microliter reaction, I always like to set this up to 10. I think what this number does is it actually tells you how deep in the metal block of the thermocycler it needs to heat. So I like to go up to 10 just as a precaution. And then because that screen always pops up, <clears throat> make sure you hit okay there and you actually see this screen pop up showing that the protocol has started before walking away. This has happened to everyone and, and still happens to me sometimes where you put your tubes in a the thermocycler, uh, you select a protocol, hit run, and you just forget to select and confirm that volume before walking away. And then you'll come back expecting your run to be done and it won't be, and you'll be sad. So yeah, just um, always make sure you get to the screen before walking away. And that's it. That's how you do a Golden Gate assembly.